so I'm standing at uh, White Horse Mountain Lookout and I'm looking out over the pine plantations and I'll just pan across here over here you can see Pumstone Passage and part of Morton Bay that is a uh, conservation zone in the Morton Bay Marine Park it's high value uh, fish habitat so the fisheries are dependent on those areas as well as uh, conservation of species and if I just pan across if you look closely you can see different coloured uh, strips of vegetation now that is the riparian veg the native vegetation that's kept as a buffer along uh, the banks of creeks uh, down here as well you can see the native forest suddenly transitioning into pine forest. So at each of those interfaces there's a range of management issues that have to be taken into account. Hopefully you can hear me over the wind up here. Now over on the horizon there, if you look very closely, can't go in any closer, is Caloudra. Okay, so we have uh, urban zones as well. And if you look closely, there's an urban interface there. And uh, there's a bit of a bear patch in front of Caloundra, and that is the Caloundra South Priority, Priority Development Area, which is one of the areas, one of the uh, themes for this field trip. Now, I'm going to just bring it back and look down here. You can see a whole range of brightly coloured green grass here going down the path back to the car park. Now that is a, a pasture grass that was brought in for grazing and has now become a weed. It's quite interesting, it's, it lines the path on the way up. Almost certainly it was brought in on people's shoes and probably on vehicles, that's a vehicle track. And so when we're talking about costs and benefits and environmental management, uh, all of these things have a cost. So the cost of putting that pa uh, path in is not just the construction, it's also the ongoing maintenance uh, and whether it's worth uh, abating the damage that those, uh, those uh, invasive grasses are doing. Uh, but that path is directly connected to the spread of those grasses into this area. If we pan across, we're looking to the west here, you can see uh, the Glasshouse Mountains. Uh, incredible tourism value for the local economy here and down here we have a number of uh, sort of smaller towns uh, through this area. Uh, they all uh, interact with the landscape in, in different ways. Down here as well there's a lot of pineapple plantation which needs a lot of fertiliser. So again we have environmental issues related to the runoff from forestry and pineapples into the waterways and down into the fish habitat of Morton Bay. The final thing I would just want to show you here is the Bruce Highway and again we have major transport infrastructure passing through here uh, and a whole range of uh, impacts, environmental impacts that are associated with that. So again when we're thinking about the cost of this sort of infrastructure it's not just construction and maintenance of the actual infrastructure, but it's also the impact on the surrounding systems, whether they're ecologies. You can see the greyer patches there of Melaleuca woodland, or whether it's the, uh, the pine plantations and the impact there. We have uh, pollution impact uh, from the vehicles, uh, we have dust and uh, rubber, tire, rubber tire dust coming off them. We have the noise impacts, which is going to impact on species. And then most of all, we have a massive fragmentation of the landscape so that most species are unable to cross uh, from the east, uh, east to the west uh, across the Bruce Highway. And to the extent that with koala populations now, we can see a difference in their genetics between the east and the west side of this uh, highway because it's effectively turned the koala population here uh, into two populations because they're unable to breed across the road. Okay, that's probably enough for one site. Let's move.